This is the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. Is this the dream Windows computer I've been looking for? Let's take a look at it. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and I'm just gonna cut to it and spill the beans here. I love this thing. This computer feels like it was built for me. I've been looking for the perfect Windows art and illustration laptop for a while now, and this it has the crown. Why? Well, number one, the pen. It is greatly improved. Number two, the rotation of the screen, how you can slide it down into different orientations. Really nice. Number three, it nails the details. The sound from the speakers is very good. The trackpad, oh my gosh, the trackpad. And the fans, the fans are crazy quiet. It's almost like Microsoft said, hey, let's make a laptop for Brad and forget about all of the other users and what they care about and just make a thing that only Brad cares about and boom. You got it here, this, this is the laptop. We need an art project for this review. This was sent to me by Black Cat. I dig it, I'm drawing it in my style. And if you want your character or your artwork redrawn in a future review, remember to tag me on Instagram. I'm always looking for new stuff. So let's check the specs. The Surface Laptop Studio is half laptop, half tablet. Actually, it's probably like three fourths laptop and maybe a quarter tablet. And this is replacing Microsoft's old Surface Book line. That was their two in one, which was a tablet that had a keyboard. So it looked like a laptop, but they could store an extra GPU down on the keyboard base. So the idea behind this laptop is to be beefier than say the Surface Pro. I picked up the lowest configuration. So this has an Intel Core i5 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. If you jump up a couple configurations, you can get this with an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card. When I'm looking at a computer, oftentimes the base configuration isn't going to have enough RAM here. 16 gigabytes, that is plenty for any of the art or illustration that I need to do. Even for a lot of the video editing that I need to do. I think if I was gonna use this as my daily driver, I probably wanna go for more, you know, more storage there, but for the most part, I, I thought this was solid for what I needed it to do. I'm a fan of the screen, and not just the way it folds down, but this actual screen itself. It's a 14.4 inch display with a refresh rate of up to 120 hertz, which is not something you see on many laptops, and a resolution of 2,400 pixels by 1,600 pixels. Yes, that's, that's a nice aspect ratio. That's three by two. And like all of Microsoft Surface products, that is a touch-enabled display. If you follow a lot of tech videos, you might think that 120 hertz is like this magical number because people are talking about it being on phones or on tablets. Here, I thought it was just kind of okay. And that was mostly not because of the refresh rate itself on the screen. The screen looked good. It's that I don't feel that Windows or the animation in Windows takes advantage of that. For example, one thing I hear a lot of people say is they really notice that high refresh rate when they're scrolling through a web page or reading text. And I don't doubt this, but I don't really feel like the scrolling animation in Windows is particularly good. It doesn't feel as weighty or as smooth as it does on a lot of Android builds or on iOS. But for the most part, moving things around Windows didn't seem super snappy or no snappier than usual to me. Since it didn't, I just went into the settings and I toggled this back down to 60 hertz. I did this partially because I'm an old curmudgeon, but also because that's going to save on battery life. Does the refresh rate help with pen lag? Yes, but I don't think it's that much. Flipping between these two refresh rates, I can tell that there is a difference, but this is not a magical lag fix. Now the battery life that I was getting on this drawing in something like Adobe Photoshop or loading a lot of apps or jumping between a lot of things was far lower than the stated average. I was getting three to four hours, which I thought was, you know, that's solid. Now, obviously a lot of the apps that I use are more on the power heavy side, so they're going to drain that battery a heck of a lot faster. But at the same time, I think with this laptop, that's that's really what it's good at. You don't want this laptop if the only thing you're gonna be doing is scrolling through the web and checking your email, you're probably wasting your money. I do really like this screen hinge. I used something similar on some Acer products last year. Now, unlike the Acer products, this one only sits at three different angles. There's one, which is our laptop angle. There's two, which is kind of this pulled down mode that covers your keyboard. And then there's three, which is pulled all the way down, which kind of turns it into almost a tablet. One thing to note is as you pull the screen down, you are gonna lose access to those keyboard shortcuts a lot of artists rely on for their day-to-day -day work. I got used to the lowest angle, it was fine. I found this to be comfortable when I was using it on my lap, but on a desk, it felt just a little bit too low. I think 15 to 30 degrees is a good like drawing angle for something like this. This was at like three or four degrees. And this is a little thing, 
but when you first pull it out, it's really wiggly, especially when that like magnet disengages. I wish that hinge was just a little bit tighter. The other thing I absolutely loved about this laptop was the trackpad. I'm used to Macs, which have had these haptic keyboards for years now, and when I go back to any Windows device, it just doesn't feel as good. This feels just like using a Mac trackpad, and I think once you try this and have used it for a few weeks, you are never gonna be able to use anything else again. Now the big thing that we have to get to is this Slim Pen 2. I've already told you that I like it, so we'll just get that out of the way. But to me, this feels like a major upgrade over many of the Surface devices that I've used in the past. And if I had to apply one word to it, it would be the word consistent. My biggest problem with Surface devices, well, I had two, Two, my two big problems with Surface devices were, was one, the pen wobble, but number two was how inconsistent the pen was from device to device or even from use to use. One minute I'd be drawing a one app and the pen line would look pretty okay and I'd jump to another app or I'd put it down or put it to sleep and come back and I'd get jitter or wobble and it would look horrendous and awful and I'd pair and unpair the pen and change the batteries and try it in different apps. The most frustrating part was just troubleshooting the pen constantly. Now I've only been using the Surface Laptop Studio for a little under a week at this point, but my experience has been far different. This pen behaves the same way pretty much every single time. I've also been testing the Surface Pro 8 at the same time with the same pen, and I've been getting the same results there. So, you know, cross fingers. So far, it's been really consistent, and I've been really happy with the way it's performing. This also means I don't have to turn up smoothing on brushes, which means I just get a very natural feeling pen while I'm drawing. The pressure sensitivity of this pen is good. I thought the initial activation rate, or how light you have to press in order for a line to appear, again, was very, very good. The palm rejection on this pen was very good. And of course, the main thing I'm looking for in these pens, and the main thing that they've improved, is the wave, which is when I'm drawing slow angled lines, I want them to be as smooth as possible. These aren't perfect, but they are far, far better than what I was getting with the old pen. Occasionally, I am gonna get a little bit of jitter on rounded lines or at weird angles. In fact, if I grab an old pen and use it on this new screen, you bet, I get more wave. I don't know if it's the sensors in the screen or the pen or a little bit of both, but whatever they're doing here, it's improved and that made me really happy. Before I had to turn up the smoothing to get the lines that I wanted, which made me lose a lot of control, which felt less organic, which made me just enjoy the experience less. And the main thing I could say about this entire experience is I just, I had fun. Looking at the design of the pen, I think it's probably gonna turn some people off. A lot of people are used to drawing with a stylus that looks like a regular stylus. This looks like a carpenter's pencil. Now this isn't something that has ever bothered me, and I've had the opportunity to use it for several hours drawing now, and I found it to be pretty comfortable. The stylus also charges along the bottom of the Surface Studio, and it attaches magnetically. This is all the rage with styluses and tablets these days, however, this might be one of the strongest magnets I have ever seen on anything. It also means you gotta exercise your fingers to take it off. The main thing a lot of people wanted to know, and I saw a lot of comments, whether it's on Twitter or the comment section down here when I was talking about the Surface Slim Pen 2, was how does it work on older devices or how do older pens work on the new device? And I haven't had the opportunity to fully test that out. I'm probably gonna be talking about that more in my Surface Go 3 review that's coming out hopefully in the next week or two. Just for fun, I paired this with the Surface Pro 7, which has now come out two years ago, and I just drew a line and it was horrendously bad. Jitter everywhere, it was, it was bad, it was nasty. This goes back to the consistency thing I was talking about before. Sometimes pens on surfaces would just do this, and it drove me absolutely bonkers. I'm gonna still continue to troubleshoot this and figure this out and, and, and provide more information in a future review, but one thing I do wanna point out is what I think a lot of people wanna know is if you already have an older Surface, can you buy a new pen for $100 and get much better results? And so far, from the tiny bit of testing I've done, the answer is no. The other big addition to this pen is the haptic feedback, and this is something Microsoft talked about a lot. And where do I fall on this? Is it good? Is it bad? I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. At times, I, I didn't think it was too bad. So what it ends up doing is when you're drawing with the pen, uh, if you push a little bit harder, it's going to shake a little bit more and give you a little bit of feedback. And they say that this is makes it feel more like you're drawing on real paper. Now I will say it feels nothing like drawing on paper, but as an effect, I didn't think it was 
too bad. This was a feature that I almost forgot about for a little while because not many programs actually support it. I was drawing in Clip Studio, I was drawing in Photoshop, most of the stuff you're gonna see in this video was shot in Photoshop, and most of these apps just don't support this haptic feedback yet. Now I did pop open an app called Sketchable, one of my favorite little apps to sketch and draw in, and uh, they support it, and in there, I thought their implementation was really, really good. If you draw really lightly with the pen, you're not gonna get any haptic feedback at all, but as you apply more pressure or like tilt the pencil a little bit, you're gonna get a little bit of haptic feedback in there. The way they've implemented it is very subtle, which is good because I think there is a, a temptation when you have a new feature like this to just be like, let's make it shake as much as we can because it's there. So if you're using this and the app you're using is trying too hard and putting too much energy in there and you don't like it right away, one thing that I would suggest is going to the settings and turning that down a little bit. I think when it's used subtly, it's a really nice effect. When it's used too much, it's too much. The pen itself has a hard tip and the older Surface pens had this rubbery tip, which gave you more control on the smooth glass screen, but felt incredibly unnatural. So even though the harder pen tip at first might not seem ideal, I did prefer it to what we had before. Now Windows 11 just launched, this product just launched, so I did run into some quirks here and there. One of them is the settings for this pen. For example, I mentioned the haptic feedback, that's in the settings underneath the Bluetooth menu. But if you wanna adjust the pressure sensitivity of that pen, you have to go to the Surface app in order to go in and change that for the pen. The other quirk I I ran into was just trying to figure out how much power is left in this stylus. I'm used to Android tablets or the iPad where you snap your stylus into place and it tells you, hey, this is how much power your stylus has left. And it indicates that it is currently charging up. Here it snaps into place so you assume it's charging but there's no indication that it's charging. Quick edit, since I recorded this video, I have discovered that there actually is an indicator light if you're looking at the pen when you connect it. So there is some indication that the pen is Charging. Mystery solved, Scooby-Doo. And to add to that, I don't know how often this like battery indicator refreshes. Right now, my guess would be approximately never. Pen was sitting at 74% for the better part of a day. I rebooted the laptop for something completely different, and when it rebooted up and I looked at the pen charging, the pen was at 100%, which meant it had been charging the whole time, but it doesn't tell me when the pen charge went down, and it didn't tell me when the pen charge went up. So in conclusion, what do I think? I think this product isn't for everyone, but clearly this product is for me. This is the first time in a long time that I've used a Windows product and thought, I could see myself switching from a Mac to use this. In fact, there is part of me that is a little bit sad that I bought the lowest configuration of this instead of going for something bigger so I could use it longer and use it for more things. There are definitely some things about this laptop that I think other people would see as cons. I don't think the battery life is all that great. The price is very, very high. I think some people really aren't gonna like the tablet part of the form factor. I totally get that. This is definitely not a gaming PC, even though it has 120 hertz and even though it can run a lot of games. At the end of the day, the big things that I'm looking for, I don't really see any cons here. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.